Anyhow, uh, I play uh, the Native American flute. I don't play traditional music. I play contemporary, and the instruments are contemporary as well. Um, nobody taught me how to play. I taught myself how to play, and for me, these instruments are medicine. And so uh, I've used them in many different ways to help heal and whatnot. Uh, the first, the, the reason I picked up the instrument uh, almost 20 years ago at an art show in Paulsbo was I was going through a di really crappy divorce. So that was my reason. I know sometimes people self-destruct when they go through a tough time. But uh, anyways, for me, it was to help me get through that time. And then I had cancer uh, 12 years ago and I uh, was allowed to play my flutes while I was going through chemotherapy uh, at Providence uh, in Everett. And so I was uh, pumped with pretty, some pretty nasty stuff. But anyhow, I'm standing here today. So anyhow, uh, uh, I'm really happy that, uh, yeah, I can still play it. And my outlook on life is a lot different. I just how, see how, how short life is, how fragile it is. So, oh, okay. So the first song I'm going to play is from one of my Lakota-style flutes. And it's my favorite flute because I had Buffy St. Marie endorse it for me because I've met her three different times at the Festival of the River, which I play at normally. So anyways, just sit back and enjoy. Thank you very much. I just made that up. And so that is what playing from your heart is. And so, uh, and the little bit of history behind the, the flutes, they never arrived here, the Coast Salish people. Uh, they represent the Plains people, the Southwest and the Southeast, the woodland people in the Southeast. Uh, you know, my native ancestry is through my mother who comes from across the imaginary border in New Mexico. And so I never, I, I had a feeling that we, were, we had native ancestry, but my parents told me as a kid growing up, they just said, you're half Mexican and half Moroccan. My dad's from Morocco, so he's Berber. And so my grandfather was a flute player uh, on that side of the family. I didn't know that till long after he passed. But um, anyways, it's in my genes. It's in my blood. And for me, when I play, my ancestors are present. My grandfather and now my father is an ancestor. And so... I know that they're here and they're listening to me and they encourage me and uh, and whatnot. But um, anyhow, uh, the next flute I'm going to play um, is a, a flute that was gifted to me by my friend Lowell Newland. 
and he's Cherokee and Choctaw. He no longer lives in Washington State, sadly. But um, he, uh, a little story behind him, he's a Vietnam veteran, and uh, his job in those days was he was a door gunner on a Huey, and those were dark days. And uh, I was still in high school. I believe Vietnam ended in 75. I graduated high school in 76, so it came pretty close. Anyways, uh, he uh, was taught how to make flutes by an elder, and it was his way to deal with uh, the darkness of, of that time. And so he made really good flutes, so he gifted this one to me. Thank you. And the crowd roared. Roar. Roared, yes, indeed. <laughs> so uh, my grandfather played a flute called the Nine, and it is a real difficult, to, for me anyways, to play. It's a grass reed, and it grows in, in the Nile and, and also in France. And it's an ancient instrument they have found buried with the pharaohs. And so, um, and they still play. My grandfather played at ceremonies and weddings, and I pretty much do the same thing. But um, I wish I could have spoken to him and asked him. But I was just a kid when I met him. I was seven years old when I went to Morocco to visit relatives. Uh, and I couldn't commute with him, communicate with him because I, I don't speak Arabic. The only word I know is inshallah, God willing. Uh, but I could talk to my cousins. They all spoke Spanish because Morocco had been colonialized by Spain and France. So they speak Spanish, French, uh, Arabic, and Berber. And if you don't know who the Berbers are other than the name of the carpets, uh, they are the tribal people, the people of the Atlas Mountains, the people of uh, the, uh, the coast, and the nomadics out in the Sahara. I have a flute that sounds similar to that, that type of instrument. Um, uh, it's a little different though. It's a Native American style flute in Middle Eastern key. And so it's in key of A, because that's what it's written on the bottom of the flute, so.
Thank you. Let me, I gotta wet my whistle here for a second. What's nice about uh, the instruments um, is I, I kind of believe in sound healing, and that's why I got to play my flutes while I was going through chemotherapy about 12 years ago. And uh, yeah, it's kind of complex, but kind of not. But uh, anyhow, uh, I have a flute that's a, a little bit different. It's uh, made by the Mesoamerican people, well, modeled after one. So you'll get to hear the, the difference in this flute. Thank you. This is a Toltec flute. Uh, normally they would be made out of clay, but a lot of makers make them out of wood. Uh, it's C-sharp, F-sharp for music purist, and it's in 432nd uh, hertz. This is the, one of the biggest flutes I have but they're not the biggest ones made. This is more of a bass flute. It's made out of poplar. The traditional wood for Native American flutes is cedar. And once again, they never came here to the Coast Salish people. Um, but uh, a lot of contemporary flutes are made of a variety of woods and such. Uh, this is made by a gentleman uh, uh, named Butch Hall out of uh, Texas. And was, this was gifted to me by a man by the name of Paul Ninehouse, who makes flutes and he lives in Arlington. And he's not native, but he loves native flutes. And he flew to P uh, the guy who owned this originally. And if you know Peter Pippin, Peter Pippin is a world flautist. And he is uh, Scandinavian, and he's from also the Midwest. So Paul went to go visit Peter, and Peter gave Paul this gift. And Paul met me and went from Peter to Paul to Peter. So anyhow, this is what I call my ghost flute. Thank you. 
you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's see if I can move this. Thank you. This is called, this has no finger holes. This is called a willow fruit, a sale floita. This comes from Norway. And uh, I even have a connection to something like this. This is played throughout the Nordic countries uh, and whatnot. So when I did my DNA test, because uh, I had to find out for sure about where my ancestors are from, and I'm all over the map. Uh, Siberia, I have a great grandfather, five, apparently five generations back from Siberia, East and West Asia. The Iberian Peninsula. I even have a two or three percent Neanderthal. I thought that was cool. But uh, anyhow, uh, it's a known fact that the Vikings traded with the Berbers in the Mediterranean. That was part of their trade routes. And um, um, I think that was really cool because when I did the DNA thing, I found out that I'm uh, also uh, DNA are very close and related with the Sami. The Sami people are the, the reindeer herd people of the Nordic countries and so and they also play this instrument so um, so normally these are made out of willow and the story behind the willow flute is in the springtime that would guy would get the willow branch and you could make a whistle you would take the bark off and you notch it a certain way and you'd have this whistle but it would only last you for uh, a few days because it would disintegrate so in 1961 somebody figured out how to make them so they could be played year round so this one's made out of PVC and so uh, in the wrapped in birch bark and nobody makes these in the United States uh, so I found a music store in Sweden that I could get it so this is in the key of D and I have one in G so it's an overtone flute you harder you blow the higher the notes is lower you blow the lower the notes and they change the tonation on the end and so it came with instructions in Norwegian and so I don't speak Norwegian I do know some words uh, to manga talk and also, yay or yay, oskadai, that uh, means I love you. That's an important word. So anyways, a little connection to the Nordic country. Originally, uh, at least with the tribal people in the Midwest, these were gender specific. Only the men played these. And they played them for the women. And these were called love flutes or courting flutes. Uh, and such in the southwest they were played for ceremony and in the southeast they were played for enjoyment so not, not only were they played for the gals but they also emulated the sounds of nature
Thank you. What, I wonder what kind of bird I was trying to emulate there. <laughs> if you hear the eagles talk to each other in the trees, that's what's really nice about that. I can do that with that. Absolutely. So we're going to ask Peter to go ahead and play one more for you in the spirit of welcoming people down to the center zone in front of the stage here for our evening circle, the 5.30 to 6 p.m. evening circle. We are pulling people in and let Peter's music uh, uh, pull you towards this beautiful opportunity to see ourselves in the circle this evening, to see who we are, to get some announcements, to do those things we need to do as a community each evening and each morning. So please, uh, without further ado, let's give it up for Peter again that's gonna welcome us in to tonight's circle. Thank you uh, very much. So I'll do one more for you. And um, this is another Lakota style flute. It's a, a loon, another one, and it's in keyed in F sharp. From my understanding, the F sharp is kind of uh, uh, the grandfather key. And in the old days, these were key to the maker's voice because the fact these are in different scales and stuff, that's a Western thing. So when the colonials and whatnot came to this to this land, they go, wow, these are cool. We should make them so that we can play with them too. So, but uh, yeah, they sound very different. And uh, uh, Kevin Locke is a traditional player. If you ever get a chance to look him up, Kevin Locke. So anyways, I'm really grateful that I can come up here and, and play and share my music and share my heart because I play from the heart. And I have C CDs, uh, they're right over there in the table. And uh, I'm, uh, like I said, very proud that I can be able to be uh, a musician with uh, the Dean of Dudley Everson and the Peace Through Music, because that's how I truly feel about music, is promoting peace with this, this instrument and so much more. Oh, and if you're wondering about my native ancestry, I did, if I hadn't mentioned it, although I did say that my mom is from Mexico, uh, Mayo and Pima, not Maya, but Mayo, and Pima, not from Arizona, but Upper and Lower Pima from Mexico. And the rest of me is, of course, I already told you that, but anyhow, here we go. Thank you again. Peace and love to you all.